Hi, my name is Valentine Goddard. I'm the founder and executive director of AI Impact Alliance, a nonprofit organization founded in 2017 to study the different implications of AI um, with and uh, with artists through the arts. And we're now in 2024, we're launching the Art Laws Grants, which are uh, fellowships uh, destined for artists who are interested in the different implications of AI. So please allow me to share my screen now and we're gonna look at um, who's eligible, what kind of topics we're gonna be touching on and uh, so on and so forth. So a AI Impact Alliance is offering a unique opportunity for Canadian artists to explore the ethical, legal, economic implications of generative AI and contribute to the governance and the direction of, um, direction of uh, generative AI. There are three grants of $5,000 each, um, and the fellowship includes approximately 25 hours of meetings and workshop um, support with experts from around the world to answer your questions and support your research. Uh, the project is over a six month period, um, starting from the selection date in November. The fellowship program will be designed to facilitate the exploration of the economic and legal implications of AI to understand both the technical implications and the economic and legal implications to allow artists to better define um, best practices and what responsible AI means uh, for artists and the arts and cultural sector. It provides the artists, the fellows with quality independent information, allows them to free up time for their research and creation. Who can apply? Uh, we're welcoming emerging mid-career and established artists um, of all disciplines. So storytellers, word, prose, poetry, fiction, multidisciplinary, film, um, documentary, uh, dance, performing artists, movement artists, musician, composers, uh, visual and digital artists, creative media artists. Um, there is absolutely no experience needed in AI. Um, we are welcoming uh, really um, artists of all disciplines who are interested in these different applications. Um, these are a list of, but not limited to a number of questions that um, are potentially like the focus uh, and, and could be part of what legal and uh, economic implications um, mean or be linked to those types of outcomes of responsible use of generative AI uh, by and for the arts and cultural sector. Uh, so uh, selected artists would explore, uh, so we're accepting projects that would explore these kind of topics, transparency, accountability, and the ethical and social implications of generative AI at large as they as it pertains to the art and uh, cultural sector. Integration of generative AI in support of the work of artists, uh, or further explanations on the effects of that use um, on individual or collective artistic practices, countering racial, uh, gender, and other biases in AI systems, uh, intersection of generative AI with social justice, reconciliation with First Nations and Indigenous peoples, um, or um, the expressions on AI decolonization and the um, potential of AI for extractivism, or in, in other words, of extracting value from the data that is being given and used by large platforms um, to make these, these type of platforms. Um, feminist principles uh, in cultural policies related to AI and generative AI with or without focus on implications for non-binary and two-spirited people. Intellectual property rights is a, a big topic, obviously, uh, for uh, all AI-generated artworks or more broadly, the protection of economic and moral rights of cultural professionals and artists. Uh, also looking at uh, all issues around um, consent on the use of uh, our content that we've created or, or, or the content that we are, our movement, our voice, our images, um, and the profit distribution mechanisms, so compensation um, and credit, credit. Um, uh, artists interested in looking at innovative business models um, that will be covered in the, in the program. The project doesn't have to be about that, but some of the 
the, the workshops will touch on those uh, questions. Um, what are the effects on traditional art markets or new business models, as I just mentioned? So that could um, likely touch on issues. Of, um, I mean, questions or potential of uh, data trust, cultural data trust, uh, collaborative data models, and so on. Uh, exploration of retrieval augmented generation or other forms of fine tuning of the large language models um, and how that can be done. So, for example, I've met artists who want to use ethically sourced data sets. What does that mean um, and what can it look like and what happens if that's a set of data that's put on top of a larger foundational model uh, where consent was not taken. So we're, we're going to be looking, as I mentioned, at all those technical issues and legal issues and what are the legal implications or outputs of the use of such systems. Uh, intersectional analysis of the impacts of gender AI on various demographic uh, groups. Um, these are all questions that are part of legal economic implications, social cultural implications that we, we welcome submissions on or that we'll be covering through the program. This is a six month fellowship um, supported by an, an international network of multidisciplinary experts, whether they be in AI or in uh, law and law of different countries, um, uh, economy. Uh, so the program will be re refined based on the, the needs of the, the fellows, as well as the members of AI Impact Alliance as they um, submit feedback from their community of artists or their the members of their organizations. What will the artist do if you are an artist and you want to be a fellow? What you would you be doing during those six months? Um, well, you would be participating in bi-monthly meetings, uh, three workshops, as well as uh, presenting your project at uh, in a conference, uh, probably in March. So that would be a larger conference. So three smaller workshops that are kind of like a, a one day um, a co interactive conference with a smaller group of people. And then um, the uh, larger conference that we forecast to be somewhere in March, 2025. Um, the in, in the network, for example, we have AI uh, experts and uh, researchers who've already joined, uh, who are going to be able to answer your questions, um, as well as uh, renowned um, curators um, who work at uh, the international level. So. There's, there's a number of experts there to answer your questions, including um, myself, of course. Um, you're gonna be participating also if at, uh, at a certain level, more or less, depending on your, your interest on the development of a collaborative learning and research, resource sharing space. Um, passively, just by the questions that you're asking, we're gonna try to develop programming that answers those um, and putting that onto a, a website so that um, we can all benefit from, from that learning. Uh, and you will be contributing in, in, you know, again, to a certain degree to policy discussions um, and the development of best practices. Uh, so we would like to arrive at the end of this project on being able to, um, have a set of guidelines for the responsible use of generative AI that are led by artists and the uh, arts and cultural organizations in, in this sector. Um, yeah, so what's unique about this? There are indeed a growing number of art and AI residencies and fellowships. Uh, what's different about this one? Well, first of all, we've, we've been at this for Quite a while. Um, we started doing the Art Impact AI workshop workshops in 20. Um, well, actually, the first conference on the social impact of AI, we integrated, you know, of course, artists and our panels to have a truly multidisciplinary conversation. Uh, then in 2019, we uh, went across Canada to talk with artists to know how they wanted to impact AI. And um, uh, then during the pandemic, we held online art and AI pre-residencies to um, answer uh, artists' questions around um, their, uh, what their questions were. If they were not in AI, what were their questions about um, AI and so on and so forth. So 
This time around, we got some uh, great uh, support uh, from the Canada Art Council once again, and our members. So the art laws grants are by and for the arts and cultural sector by this community. The program, the design of the platform are centered around the artistic community according to the needs of artists and art service organizations. It has a transdisciplinary approach um, research creation component, which I believe is important because I am an artist and I'm a lawyer and I need to learn through the arts, especially when we're facing such new kind of questions. The technology evolves rapidly. The AI, the AI law and policy landscape is evolving rapidly. So to be able to learn while we're doing helps us understand both the real technical components as well as the legal implications of those different technical choices. Um, intersectional and gender sensitive perspective is adopted throughout the design of the program uh, to the um, to the output in terms of any type of policy work that will be involved at the end. Uh, we want to keep that approach. Um, and yeah, sorry, <laughs> rambling here in front of my Zoom video, uh, my Zoom camera. Uh, the goal uh, is to balance between technological innovation and um, social justice, social innovation, social change. Um, the art laws actively engages uh, the participants in public policy development related to AI and the arts in support of the arts and cultural sector with a goal to protect democratic processes, democracy uh, and cultural security and having positioned the arts important critical place in AI governance. Um, I have to insist that this is a truly independent process. There, um, we are creating a membership system and a participation system that prevents any type of interference uh, or lobbying from the influence of uh, big tech of tech giants. Who is eligible and what are the selection criteria? So there's no experience in AI or digital necessary. Uh, what is important is to demonstrate a genuine interest in um, learning, participate in discussions about the ethical, social, environmental implications of AI. Inter interdisciplinary projects are encouraged, uh, not necessary, but they are. Teams are accepted, but keep in mind that one person must be an artist with professional status and reside and work in Canada. And the amount of the grant remains the same regardless of the number of people in the team. So it's an important question to address when you're looking at collaborating with uh, um, either international artists or technologists who wanna come and support your project um, and so on, as well as of course, please advise us because we will not accept any collaborations uh, with uh, Google or Meta uh, support. I'm sorry about that. Uh, if the you're working, for example, with um, arts-led support organization that works in digital art and they have computers or knowledge that they want to share with you and make available to you what in, in this fellowship, then that is, of course, um, welcome and supported. Um, grants are reserved for artists residing and practicing in Canada. We can accept applications that are written in French or English. We uh, encourage applications from uh, artists representing the broadest possible range of pers perspectives and backgrounds. Um, see our recommended best practices for art projects that are exploring AI ethics that offers concrete ways to favor diversity and inclusion in your projects. I'll get back to that in a couple minutes. So selection criteria, relevance and quality, the previous, your, your work or previous work samples must demonstrate relevance to the objectives of the call and have peer reviewed artistic quality. They must be presented document and documented in a professional manner. 
Uh, and again, I recommend looking at our best practices. The link is in the call. It's on our website. So you can have a look there and we'll uh, look at them quickly uh, in, a, in a minute. The, the work plan that you're going to give us should demonstrate how the project relates to the concepts um, and the goals of the residency um, uh, grant, the fellowship grant, and how is that achievable within the allotted time and budget. Finally, clarity. Uh, the expected outcome of your project must be clear. Uh, what will you be presenting at the conference, the final presentation of all projects? What is it going to be? Is it going to be um, a script of a comedy? Is it going to be uh, a documentary of 10 minutes? Are you presenting a visual art piece? Uh, that would be commented and be accompanied with a report, uh, thoughts, uh, commented can include a, a written report or a presentation during, um, during the conference. Uh, is it part of a play? Uh, is it part of a dance? Um, so just be very clear what it is and then remember the feasibility. Um, remember how much time we have and how much money you have. So what is that going to look like? Here are the best practices. These were, um, these the, the research for this started uh, during the Art Impact AI um, workshops when I met hundreds of artists to uh, talk with them about um, what kind of AI they wanted or how they wanted impact, what they, what they thought was um, a responsible use of, of AI and, um, and then I continued that research throughout other um, workshops. And these guidelines are a merge between machine learning, multidisciplinary design, and best curatorial practices for art projects that seek social change, for example, climate action change. In this case, achieving responsible AI or AI that has a mission and a positive impact on, on society. So you can read the full chapters, 6,000 words, or you can follow me through these quick slides uh, that summarize the resulting um, best practices. And if you do go look at the, the full paper, you'll see which authors I'm, I'm quoting and I'm referring to in substantiating these proposed guidelines. Um, they're, they're not compulsory. Uh, it is um, bouncing off for discussion. You could propose other guidelines. Um, so I'm definitely open, open to that, but this is to get that mm, thought process going. And uh, of course, feel welcome to ground your application into some of these guidelines saying that this is how you this is how you see how them applying to your your project. Uh, so the first one, for example, is an art that acknowledges the political dimensions of AI and contributes proactively to the co-creation of responsible, equitable, sustainable, and AI data governance, including data sovereignty. Um, avoiding scenarios that uh, foster a sense of fear or panic and favoring those that foster a sense of agency. Uh, because then participants in those art projects tend to take action more towards the, the, the desired outcome. So in climate action research, art research, um, the exhibits that allowed participants, that gave an, uh, the participants the impression that there was an area that they had power over, that they could do something, um, led to more positive um, change in terms of climate uh, behavior. Um, we research shows that we learn better together. Uh, so interactivity, interactivity, immersion in some art forms, this is very natural and happens naturally. You don't need to explain it. In others, it might be more important to explain to me how this is going to be achieved. Um, inclusion is concrete, offers added value in the design of the project itself. Who is leading? Who's benefiting from the project? Um, going out of traditional institutions uh, is um, also based on recent um, uh, reports on how to better engage with, with the public. So going to a community center and a school would totally be acceptable. You don't have to be in a traditional art space. Um, it could be online, actually, for that, for that matter. 
Projects that recognize the plurality, plurality of knowledge sources and co-construction give credit to where they took their inspiration from. Art that values authenticity and concrete objectives. In this case, we're talking about focusing on reconciliation, human rights, sustainable development goals. Um, and this is the big naughty one in generative AI, naughty as in not, not the other naughty. Uh, respect the intellectual property, the moral rights, cultural intellectual property. Generative AI, it can be quite difficult to um, respect intellectual party, the property, the way that models are created now. So if you are going to be exploring the use, which would make very much sense, um, do maybe tell us how you plan on what kind of questions you have about intellectual property and what do you want to um, answer really about those, those questions. Um, cultural intellectual property, for those who are maybe not aware, is a definition on the Canada Art Council referring to Indigenous heritage specifically. Um, and so, yes, we do invite submissions to address these uh, questions and to have a sense of respect for, for that in their proposals. Um, eligible expenses. You can use your funds for your artist fees or material, but keep in mind that you will have approximately 25 hours of active workshop participation on the different questions that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so it's important for us that you include that in your budget. It affects the feasibility of your project. We don't want you working um, unpaid. The process. Um, apply the deadline to start with is October 21st. So submit before the deadline. Um, project proposal must be detailed, uh, include the implication of generative AI to be explored. So which implications, what questions are you addressing, investigating and the solutions that you hope to um, explore. Uh, the work plan should include an outline of the budget and timetable. Um, include an artist statement and a portfolio and uh, a CV, a resume. If some of those elements for you are in one document, that's fine. We will be flexible, but we do need to understand the link between your practice and this project. And what experience do you have? If you're an established artist in a field that is really not AI related, that's totally fine. We want to understand, you know, what, what kind of practice you have and then relate that to your, your interests. And then we'll understand that if you're used to working in AI, you might you know, be more familiar with certain concepts. And if you're, if you're not, you, you won't, but this is part of the goal of this fellowship is to um, allow artists of all disciplines and all different levels of their career uh, to explore these uh, questions together. The calendar, uh, so October 21st, remember remember that one, uh, midnight Eastern time, uh, the Google form must be in our uh, mailbox. Uh, anything time stamped after that, uh, we won't be able to look at. Uh, this is a pan-Canadian call. We are expecting quite a number of applications uh, and we're a small team. So uh, that's important to respect. Uh, November 5th, uh, we're giving us up a very short time to look at the applications because we want to get this ball rolling and have workshops before uh, two workshops before Christmas. Uh, so notification selection should be November 5th and our first meeting just hopping online to get a chat together should be November 6th. Workshop one and two dates will be de determined, but that should be before December 15th. Um, and workshop three would probably be in January to give everybody a chance to digest, research, rest a little bit, work on other stuff. And then um, the annual uh, conference and project presentation would be March 2025. Just a big, a little bit of a broader context to these uh, art law grants um, is this is made with the support of the Canada Art Council for 2024-2025 uh, project, uh, which is called the Art AI Law and so Society Resource Cluster. And uh, this is um, part of the AI Impact Alliance's mandate uh, since it was founded in 2017. 
Uh, we are launching the membership um, application, the, the membership this year. So uh, artists and art service organizations, civil society organizations that have a related mission can join and become members. Uh, we're also inviting uh, members from universities um, to, to join and support with their expertise. We already have some, um, uh, some of those such as uh, Toronto uh, Met University's responsible um, AI consortium uh, who have joined to be able to, to um, contribute their expertise in, in these projects and programming. Uh, we are committed to strategic foresight and raising awareness in the applications of generative AI and arts and culture, and we're creating um, a website that promotes dialogue, resource sharing, and information sharing. Uh, the goal is to ensure artist representation in AI policy, and as it collides and coincides with cultural policy more and more, and to promote the role of art in democracy, cultural security, and AI governance. So on this adventure, um, we hope you will join us in shaping the future of AI in the arts and contribute to responsible AI and practices in the creative sector. Uh, we look forward to reading your projects, exploring the legal economic implications of generative uh, AI uh, in the arts and cultural sector. So talk to you soon. Look forward to reading you.